Amanda and the Lost Time by Shelley Admont. Amanda, would you go walk the dog? Her mom asked for the third time that day. Not now, Mom. I'll do it later. He won't run away or anything, replied Amanda. She played on her computer, eyes glued to the screen. When will you help me make Dad's birthday card? asked her little sister. I've been waiting all day, Amanda. Oh, Natalie, his birthday isn't for another week. Amanda sighed without bothering to turn her head. We can do it tomorrow. That evening, her little brother also wandered over. Please, Amanda, read me a book, he insisted. I love when you read me books, especially this one, the pirate book. I don't feel like reading right now, Jonathan. Maybe another day, Amanda said. Her focus remained on the TV, so she didn't see her brother frown sadly. Hours turned into days, as tomorrow passed, then the day after tomorrow, but Amanda still did nothing. When her dad's birthday came, she thought, No big deal. I'll do it next year. Sure, I'll make the most amazing card for dad's next birthday. She kept putting things off till tomorrow. Another day? Sometime. Just not now. She was late to school, didn't finish her homework on time, and refused to help her parents and siblings. The thing Amanda loved most in the world was to play chess. But somehow, she couldn't even find time for that. It could have continued like this for a very long time. But one day, it all went wrong. The day started the same. Her alarm clock rang at 7 a.m. as usual. Amanda opened her eyes and looked out the window. Outside, it was as dark as night. The clock must have broken down, she thought, before falling back to sleep. She woke up again after an hour, but it was still dark outside. She didn't know what happened. But something felt wrong. Amanda rolled out of bed with the strange feeling that she had been asleep for too long. She walked to her parents' room slowly, trying not to wake them up. But when she came into their room, it was empty. Where is everybody? Amanda whispered. She ran to Natalie's room, but there was no one there either. She checked her brother's room, the kitchen, the living room, and the bathroom. But there wasn't a living soul in the house at all. Not even her dog. Frightened and frustrated, Amanda raced back to her room. She approached the window and looked at the sky full of stars. Where's my family? She thought before bursting into tears. I know what happened to you. A strange voice wheezed. Who are you? She asked, her eyes widening in surprise. Look up to the sky. I'm here. Amanda looked again at the sky and saw the moon smiling at her. Are you talking, moon? Amanda said. The stars twinkled in her eyes as she stared into the sky. What happened? Where's my family? I've watched the world since time began, and I see everything. You didn't use your time wisely. You wasted it, and now it's lost. Now, while everyone else lives in the sunshine, you're only left with nighttime. How could that be? Amanda said. Her cheeks, red with anger, puffed out as she talked. You can't lose time. Time isn't like socks or gloves. You don't feel it. Oh, you can definitely feel it. You can measure it and see how many useful things you can do during the day. Moon explained. The lost time gets taken to the tree of time in the faraway forest. The sun always shines with the name of whoever lost it written on them. The tree has small bottles and giant ones because some people waste a lot of time, and others waste only a little. What? I will never play with friends and see my family again? I can't go to school? What should I do here? Amanda was really scared. Her knees shook like leaves in the wind. Is there any way to return everything to normal? There is only one solution, said the moon, but it's not easy. You can still get your time back. Go to the Tree of Time and find the bottle with your name on it. When you get your bottle, you need to open it to release your time. Amanda grew much happier and opened her mouth to give her usual answer. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. But the moon continued. However, there is one condition. You must go now. 
If you don't release your time within twelve hours, it will remain on the tree forever. And you, you're going to be stuck here in the dark and soon turn into an old woman. I'm ready, shouted Amanda without hesitation. But how will I know where this forest is? I'll show you the way, replied Moon. Take your watch and flashlight and follow me. Amanda slipped a sparkly purple watch on her wrist before grabbing her backpack. She put the flashlight and some snacks into the bag and left the house to find her lost time. The streets, usually bustling with life, were dark and empty like she had never before seen. Only moonlight and the weak light of her flashlight guided her way. Although Amanda was very scared, she told herself to stay strong and brave. I wonder where all the people are now, she thought. Maybe I'm the only one who wasted time. I'm the only one who must wander through the night to find it. As Amanda wandered down the streets, she spotted something strange beneath the bench. It looked like a box wrapped in brown paper. Slowly, she picked up the box, only to discover that it was a book with a note attached. It read, For Amanda. For me? Amanda said, her fingers feeling the book's rough edges. She opened it, sat down on the bench, and began to read. It was a book about swashbuckling pirates sailing the Indian Ocean. The pirate crew traveled miles and miles through the treacherous sea while hunting for treasure. Amanda read the book in one breath. When she finished, tears began streaming down her face. Just then, she realized how much she had missed by not reading it with Jonathan. She started thinking about her life before that night, and all the things she could have done but didn't until a familiar voice called out. Amanda, we need to move on, the moon said. She closed the book, wiped her tears, and looked down at her watch. Wow, I was sitting here for two whole hours and I didn't even notice, she said, smiling to herself. Amanda stuck the book in her backpack, and they continued on the journey. After walking for what felt like ages, moon led Amanda to a small lake. His light caused the water to shimmer and sway like it was dancing. A big basket resting near the water caught her eye. She approached the basket carefully before peering inside. There was brightly colored paper, more glitter than she had ever seen, colorful markers and puffy stickers. She lifted the basket up only to find a small yellow note taped to its side. To Amanda, it said. It's for Dad's card, Amanda yelled. Quickly, without wasting even a second, she started to work. She cut, colored, folded, stacked, and colored again. As she worked, Amanda remembered all the time she played with her younger brother and sister, and all the fun they had together. Why didn't I help Natalie before? Amanda wondered. She looked at the beautiful birthday card in her hand, and she felt very sad. Amanda missed her entire family, as well as Ace, her precious puppy. I have to find the lost time! She said loudly, looking at her watch. There were only five hours left before she would be trapped forever. Hey, Moon, show me the rest of the way, called Amanda as she slid the card into her backpack. I have no time to waste. Now Amanda moved very quickly. Along the way, she thought about everything she would change when she got home. I'm going to practice chess more, and I'll play with Jonathan and Natalie. I also want to read a lot of books and... She did not even notice that two hours passed until they reached the forest. Now I have to say goodbye to you, said Moon. I can't enter the forest. The sun shines there. From here, you must go on by yourself. But I'm scared, Amanda started to stutter. Just looking at that forest made her blood run cold. How will I know where to go? Enter the forest and walk straight until you reach a giant tree. The Tree of Time. You'll recognize it right away because it's covered in bottles. You will need to find a bottle with your name on it and open it, Moon said, his voice low and kind. I'm sure you will succeed. Good luck, Amanda. Thank you for helping me, said Amanda. Taking a deep breath, she walked into the forest. Even though she was scared, Amanda marched on and thought about her family. She thought about hugging her mom and dad, playing with her siblings, and petting her puppy. These thoughts made Amanda feel strong, so she kept going. As she walked deeper and deeper into the forest, the darkness receded and the sun started to shine. Soon the sky became bright. I must be really close, 
she thought as she turned off her flashlight. Soon she began to recognize the silhouette of a huge tree. Amanda was so excited that she couldn't just walk, so she ran faster than ever before. As she approached the tree, she started to see the shape of some man sitting on the trail. Another few minutes of running, and Amanda was already standing next to him. He was a very old man, sitting on a stone with a chessboard lying before him. He paid no attention to Amanda, and continued staring at his chessboard. "'Hello there,' Amanda said, her heart beating like a jackhammer. "'Hello, hello,' snapped the old man without turning his head. "'Do not interrupt me, girl. I do not have much time, and I have many things to do.' "'Don't have time for what?' she said. "'What, what, to do things I love the most,' replied the old man. His eyes never left the chessboard as he spoke. "'I never found the time for it. I always procrastinated, until one day my whole life had passed. Only now, as an old man, I can understand what I've missed. I wish I could bring my time back. There's so much I didn't do.' tears streamed down his wrinkled cheeks. "'Come with me to the Tree of Time,' Amanda said. She reached out and held his hand. "'It's here. It's really close. Maybe we could bring your time back, too.' "'Thank you, dear. Unfortunately, it's too late for me. My time has already run out,' replied the old man sadly. A light smile appeared on his face. "'But you are young. You can still do it. You can return your lost time.' Learn to use it right, and do anything you like. Decide what you want to be, and live your dream. Amanda looked into his big eyes and wanted to say something, but she couldn't speak through her tears. Play one game with me, said the old man. Do you know how to play chess? Yes, Amanda exclaimed, clapping her hands together in excitement. I love playing chess. Once I even won a chess championship at school. "'Good for you! So you must be practicing every day,' reasoned the old man, looking deep into her eyes. Amanda looked down at the ground, her cheeks flaming. "'No,' she said quietly. "'Usually I am too busy for this.' "'Ah, oh, what a pity,' he said. "'Don't repeat my mistakes, dear. Let's play a short game.' Amanda sat on the rock on the other side of the chessboard, and they began to play. During the game... She remembered all the fun she had practicing for the chess competition. At the end of the game, the old man shook Amanda's hand and said, Thank you for the game. You're a good player, but it wouldn't hurt you to practice more. Amanda didn't say anything. Now you must hurry, dear, continued the old man, pointing to her watch. Use your time wisely, and do not forget me and everything you have learned along the way. Enjoy every minute of your life, because time is the most precious thing we have. Now run! Run fast! Amanda started running as fast as she could toward the giant tree. She heard the old man's voice echo from behind her. Don't forget! She ran so fast that she couldn't feel her feet, but Amanda didn't care. She was too busy imagining all the wonderful things she could do when she returned home. Finally, she arrived at the giant tree, piled high with glass bottles. There were hundreds. Maybe thousands of bottles on the Tree of Time. So many people lost their time, Amanda thought sadly. How could I possibly find my bottle here, among all these bottles? She raced around the tree, trying to spot her name. I couldn't have wasted too much time. I'll start looking among very, very small bottles. Abigail, Adam, Anna, Danny, Mia, Naomi. There is no Amanda. Have I really wasted so much time? She was surprised. I need to find my bottle. Amanda checked her watch. She only had 15 minutes left. Stressed and scared, Amanda ran around the tree again, searching for her bottle. With the excitement and pressure, her heart started to beat faster. Her feet ached, and her eyes were full of tears. There were so many bottles on that tree. A few minutes later, Amanda felt so dizzy that she fell down. Lying underneath a tree, she promptly burst into tears. That's it, she cried helplessly. There's no chance of finding it. I'm so sorry I wasted my time. She was sitting under that tree, sniffling and crying softly, and began thinking about her journey to the tree, the book she read, 
the card she designed, and the old man with whom she played chess. Suddenly, his last words hit her. Don't forget about me. Enjoy every minute of your life. Time is the most precious thing we have. Take advantage of every minute, she said to herself. I have another ten minutes, so I will not give up. She stood up and looked up again at the tree full of bottles. All of a sudden, the sunlight shone on one of the bottles, and its reflection dazzled Amanda. She closed her eyes for a second and moved away from the light. Then she opened her eyes and looked at this bottle again. It was a green bottle with a little white note taped on it. Amanda S. Amanda was so excited that she could hardly breathe. Mustering her strength, she jumped and stretched her hand toward the bottle, snatching it right off the tree. She clutched the bottle close to her chest and looked at it closely. Her lost time, her wasted time, was trapped inside. That time could have been used much more wisely. I will never forget that, whispered Amanda as she pried the bottle open. The alarm clock rang at 7 a.m. as usual. Amanda opened her eyes, rolled onto her back, and glanced out the window. The sun shone brightly. What a beautiful day outside, she thought. And what a strange dream I had. She leapt out of bed and raced downstairs. Her mom was cooking breakfast in the kitchen, and her dad and Ace had just come back from their morning run. Natalie and Jonathan were sound asleep in their beds. Mom! Dad! I just had the scariest dream! Amanda shouted and ran to her parents. Or maybe it wasn't a dream? Perhaps it was a dream or maybe not. But from that day, Amanda never left things for tomorrow and never wasted her time again. Somehow, she found plenty of time to have fun and to do the things she loved, but also to help others. She read books and played chess, spent time with her siblings, and helped her mom. She even had enough time to watch TV and play on her computer. And what about you, children? What things can you do now, rather than putting them off for tomorrow?